Hi everyone, my name is Odet Levinger. And my name is Nintai Vigdelaus. We wrote the blood pressure estimation from PPG signals using convolutional neural networks and CMEs network paper together with Yair Moshe from the CIPA lab of the Electrical Engineering Department at the Technion and Dani Eitan from the Technion School of Medicine. This paper presents two techniques that enable continuous and non-invasive cuffless blood pressure estimation using PPG signals with convolutional neural networks. The first technique is calibration-free. The second technique achieves a more accurate measurement by estimating blood pressure changes with respect to a patient's PPG and ground truth blood pressure values at calibration time. For this purpose, it uses an adjusted CMEs network architecture, which we'll talk about later. When trained and tested on the MIMIC-2 database, its results almost comply with the Association of Advancement of Medical Instrumentation recommendation and are as accurate as the values estimated by many home blood pressure measuring devices. Many works and papers were done on this subject. We surpassed them, and due to our paper's state-of-the-art results, we finally have the ability to reach a feasible, non-invasive, long-term blood pressure monitoring device. Blood pressure is an important parameter of the human body, whose measurement allows early detection of many medical issues, especially cardiovascular diseases. Blood pressure is usually expressed in terms of systolic pressure when the heart beats and blood pressure is at its highest, as we can see on the dark green part of the cardiac cycle, and diastolic pressure between heartbeats when blood pressure is at its lowest, as we can see on the bright green part of the cardiac cycle and measured in millimeters of mercury. Normal resting blood pressure for adults is approximately 120 millimeters of mercury systolic and 80 millimeters of mercury diastolic. The current widespread blood pressure monitoring methods are divided into invasive and non-invasive methods. Invasive arterial line is a clinical standard for continuous high accuracy blood pressure measurement. Non-invasive blood pressure measurement methods typically use an oscillometry inflatable arm or wrist cuff. These methods are not feasible for long-term blood pressure monitoring due to discomfort caused by repeated inflation and deflation and mobility limitations caused by the measuring device. Photoplatismography, or simply PPG, is an optically obtained signal that can be used to detect blood volume changes in the microvascular bed of tissue. PPG signals contain information on cardiovascular parameters such as heart rate, blood oxygen saturation, and blood pressure. Since PPG is non-invasive, simple, and low cost, it has wide potential for clinical applications. This is a very promising technology and a potentially feasible replacement for invasive arterial blood pressure measurement, as PPG has been shown to have high correlation with arterial blood pressure in the time domain, as we can see in the figure below, and in the frequency domain. Many attempts have been made to estimate blood pressure using PPG signals, like pulse wave analysis that uses a signal PPG sensor and typically extract features from the PPG signal in the time and frequency domains. Many works extract handcrafted features which are usually noise sensitive and may provide unreliable values. These features are used along with blood pressure labels to train a regression model with many machine learning algorithms. We've seen many methods in which the error is unsatisfactory for most medical applications. Recently, deep neural network methods have been successfully employed to deal with varied medical problems and in particular blood pressure estimation from PPG. PPG spectrograms are used as an input to artificial neural network or simply ANN that is trained to automatically compute relevant PPG features and use them for estimating blood pressure values. A big advantage of this approach is that it does not require handcrafted features, which are usually noise sensitive and may provide unreliable values. Some works include a training on single patient's PPG data, which includes small data set that is difficult to generalize. Others use additional calibration data for each patient, such as gender, age, and BMI, and others got unsatisfactory results. We used the MIMIC-2 database, containing the identified health-related data associated with thousands of patients who stayed within the critical care units of the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center 
between 2001 and 2008. This database contains a variety of vital medical parameters. We use two parameters for our dataset, PPG and correspondent arterial blood pressure signals. We divided the PPG and blood pressure signals to 30 seconds windows as such period of time represents stable blood pressure values. This division yielded a lot of such windows from hundreds of different patients, representing more than two and a half years of recordings. Signals in this dataset often contain significant artifacts due to sensor fall off, sensor losing good contacts, and many more reasons. The main artifacts we have identified are, first, physiologically impoverable blood pressure values, including systolic blood pressure values not in the range of 75 to 165, or diastolic blood pressure values not in the range of 40 to 85. Some signals even had negative values, as we can see on the left figure. Second, fluctuations in blood pressure within a 30 second window, as systolic and diastolic blood pressure values are determined by the mean of the maximum and minimum peaks of the blood pressure signal, respectively, Signals with unstable peaks may have unreliable blood pressure values, as we can see on the middle figure. Third, noisy PPG and blood pressure signals. Significant noise appears in many blood pressure and PPG signals, making them unreliable. Note that even a minor noise may corrupt the signal and significantly affect the accuracy of blood pressure estimation, like we can see on the right figure. Therefore, a strong and rigid preprocessing is required. To obtain a reliable dataset, we must extensively pre-process the PPG and blood pressure signals to remove windows with such artifacts. We do so by following these steps. First, removing unreliable windows. PPG and blood pressure signals are periodic and are therefore typically characterized by high autocorrelation values. When corrupted by artifacts, these signals get lower autocorrelation values. To remove unreliable windows, we take similar steps for both PPG and blood pressure. In order to do that, we threshold the energy of the autocorrelation signal. Second, removing unreliable patient and their data. After removing unreliable windows as mentioned, many patients remain with only few reliable windows. This may indicate unreliable signals from these patients, so we remove patients with less than 100 windows or that over 95% of their data removed in the previous step. And third, outlier removal. Highly abnormal blood pressure values are rare and therefore a reliable deep neural network estimator cannot be trained for these values. Furthermore, their accurate estimation is usually less clinically important. Therefore, for each patient, we remove all windows with blood pressure values that vary over plus minus 40 mm of mercury from the patient's first window that passed the previous two steps. After these steps, we remain with a dataset containing about 130 second windows belonging to 304 different patients. The histogram of the systolic and diastolic blood pressure are shown in the left and right figures respectively. It can be seen that the variance of the diastolic blood pressure histogram is much smaller, which gives much better results in the learning model. We use a CNN to extract spectrotemporal features from PPG spectrograms obtained from each of the 30 second windows, inspired by AlexNet architecture. For stronger regularization, we added batch normalization layer, and in the last layer, unlike the original AlexNet architecture, the second fully connected layer fits into a linear regression layer. Another important parameter that we adjusted to our task was the loss function, from cross entropy, as is common in classification networks, to L1 loss, which is much more suitable for solving regression problems, and for minimizing the mean absolute difference used as a measure of blood pressure estimation accuracy. Several previous works claimed that per patient calibration is crucial for accurate blood pressure estimation for PPG as the blood pressure signal depends on the specific properties of each patient's cardiovascular system. These works perform calibration using additional data such as patient age, gender, BMI, and height. We propose calibration using a single first available 30 second windows of PPG signal and its associated blood pressure reading. The rationale behind this technique is that the physiological characteristics of each patient are embedded in his PPG spectrograms. In order to calibrate this way for each patient, we use a Siamese network architecture instead. 
Siamese networks are neural networks that contain two identical sub-network components, meaning that Siamese network use the same architecture and parameters while working in tandem on two different input vectors to compute comparable output vectors and measure the distance between them. The two identical CNN subnetworks have the same architecture inspired by AlexNet, one receiving as input the current PPG spectrogram and the other receiving as input the PPG spectrogram of the first available window of the same patient. The two feature vectors are subtracted to yield a calibrated feature vector. If both input PPG spectrograms have closed blood pressure values, then their feature vectors are also expected to have similar values. Whereas if the two input PPG spectrograms have distant blood pressure values, then their feature vectors values are also expected to have very different values. In this figure, we can see the architecture of our adjusted CMEs network. As mentioned before, both inputs have the same architecture, and while one CMEs network uses a metric with only positive values to estimate the distance between the two feature vectors corresponding to the two inputs, such as the Euclidean distance, we subtract the two vectors from each other without taking the absolute value. The reason we didn't take the absolute value is to allow negative values as we also need to know the direction of the distance, indicating higher or lower blood pressure values compared to the blood pressure value of the calibration window. Finally, the calibrated feature vector is fed to a ReLU activation layer and the linear regression layer to estimate the difference in blood pressure values from the blood pressure value of the calibration window. The results of the two techniques described before can be seen in this figure, when in the first line we can see the systolic and diastolic blood pressure confusion metric sets with no calibration, and in the second line we can see the systolic and diastolic blood pressure confusion metric sets with calibration. It can be seen that all of the metric sets are diagonal, which represent good accuracy for the results, and the results with calibration are more accurate, as the metric sets are more diagonal and the results are closer to the diagonal. We can also see that in the diastolic blood pressure matrices, the area of the lower values is more accurate. The results of the two techniques are summarized numerically in this table. The higher accuracy diastolic blood pressure estimation versus systolic blood pressure estimation is explained by the lower variance of the diastolic blood pressure as mentioned before. The association of for the advancement of medical instrumentation recommend that the mean absolute difference of non-invasive blood pressure measurement should not exceed 5 mm of mercury and the standard deviation should not exceed 8 mm of mercury from a reference method. With calibration, we meet this requirement for diastolic blood pressure and also meet it for systolic blood pressure. Even without calibration, the accuracy achieved is very promising. Unlike other results of other methods, as can be seen in the left column, our results are significantly more accurate, and we can say that finally we got satisfactory results that are feasible for home applications. In conclusion in this paper, we propose two techniques for estimating blood pressure only from PPG using CNNs by representing short windows of PPG signals as spectrograms. Both were trained on a large dataset after extensive pre-processing. One technique does not require calibration, and the other estimates the change in blood pressure values with respect to the patient PPG and ground truth blood pressure values at the time of calibration. To this aim, it uses an adjusted CMEs network architecture. Since some blood pressure monitors also do not meet these requirements in many cases, we can conclude that the results we obtain are sufficient for many practical medical applications. This result is state of the art, and after others didn't succeed, it now enables making a reliable device with high accuracy. Thank you very much for your time, and we hope you enjoyed watching our work.